Hello and welcome to the online library project. My name is Galina Pachu and I am a teacher of English at Public Institution Theoretical Lyceum Livy Deliano, Chisinau. Today we shall begin a new unit, Unit 6, and the first lesson is called In Harmony with Nature. During this lesson we are going to develop our speaking and reading skills as well as revise some grammar. Hold a conversation on a familiar topic using the strategies of applying the language in real-life situations and being efficient. Describe, define or exemplify words, word combinations. Decode the meaning of the unknown words and phrases from the context. Understand the acceptable usage of grammar in a given linguistic context. Sustain opinions in discussion by providing relevant explanations, arguments and comments. Understand the global meaning of a written text of moderate size, even if it contains unknown words and phrases. I would recommend you open the books on page 112. We'll begin our lesson as traditionally, with the way you understand its title. Try to explain what in harmony with nature means to you. Describe your feelings in the following situations. You are walking barefooted on green grass. You are in the forest and the birds are singing. You are on the top of a mountain and you admire the view. Look at these pictures and comment on the man's interaction with nature. Maybe you will use such vocabulary as nature, traveling, exploring, harmony, picturesque landscapes factories, air pollution, ground or zone problems, smog, destructive gases, overcrowded highways, traffic fumes, vehicle exhaust, starving polar bears, global warming, melting sea ice, climate change, extinct animals, overcrowded cities, overpopulation, social problems, the process of urbanization. In the next activity, you are to give the definitions to the following words. My advice is whether you use a dictionary, be sure that this is a reliable source of information. Now, let's see what are the definitions given by the worldwide known dictionaries. Nature is the phenomena of the physical world collectively, including plants, animals, the landscape and other features and products of the earth as opposed to humans or human creations. Example: The breathtaking beauty of nature. Natural laws. In philosophy, it's a system of right or justice held to the common to all humans and derived from nature rather than from the rules of society or positive law. Example: It is a natural law and the instinct is part of one's being. Harmony is the combination of separate but related parts in a way that uses their similarities to bring unity. Example: Delightful cities where old and new blend in harmony. In this task, you are to imagine you have to explain to an alien what nature is like on Earth. Read the explanations below and match the titles with the paragraphs provided. You'll find this reading activity on page 113, exercise 2. Let's read together. Our planet is often seen as a living, growing and fertile being. Mother Earth got her name because she is the giver of life to all things. In some places women lie down on the soil in the hope that it will help them to have babies themselves. Another ritual includes placing the newborn baby on the ground as a way of thanking the Earth for the continuing gift of life. Mother Earth gives both food and shelter to each of us. She nurtures us through life and reclaims our bodies after death to continue the cycle of nature. Without the Earth's support, life would not exist. 
Okay, here we see that the best title for this explanation is Mother Earth. Read attentively this explanation and think about its perfect title. Plants play an enormous part in the cycle of nature. Flowers not only make our planet look beautiful, but they also provide food for creatures such as bees. The bees make honey for their young, and it's also one of humankind's favorite foods. People use the essence of flowers and herbs to heal their bodies and ease their souls. Plants make us feel good because they are linked with love, light and spirit. We grow them, eat them, cook them, grind them into medicines and even make them into magical potions and charms that can help change people's lives. Over the centuries, people have given various meanings to plants. A bunch of flowers, for example, can mean quite a lot. Geraniums and yellow roses stand for friendship and red roses for love. Other meanings refer to heraldry or coats of arms. For example, a vine means joy and the lily represents royalty, wisdom, truth and loyalty. A sunflower is the sign of a good person. Yes, you were right, it's plants and flowers. Here you have explanation number three. Water covers most of the Earth's surface and is home to some extraordinary forms of life, many of which we have yet to discover. Many people believe that life on Earth began in the oceans and only developed later into plants and animals that could live on our land. The rivers on the majority of the streams of the world are like highways between the oceans transporting people and cargo all around the earth. Water has the power to cut away stone and it carves its own route across the countryside, sometimes forming fantastic underground caves and huge canyons, such as the Grand Canyon in Arizona. Again, you determine the right title, that is, Waters of Life. Here you have the last piece of reading. Everything that happens on and around the Earth is controlled by the forces of nature. Natural cycles such as the seasons, night and day, birth, growth and death have an effect on the lives of all plants and animals, including humans. Even rocks and minerals are affected by the movement of the Earth, the flow of rivers and streams and the heat of the seasons. People and their technology seem to have found many ways of interfering with nature. However, nature is difficult to control. In the battle for power over the Earth, the forces of nature will almost certainly win. Few people dare to question this statement. The title of this explanation is Nature. As a post-reading activity, you are to match the words with their definitions in the exercise that you see on your screens. Here you can check your results. Grind – to crush into fine particles. Potion – a liquid dose, especially of medical magic, or poisonous content. Canyon – a narrow valley with high, steep sides, usually with a stream at the bottom. Carve – to produce or form by cutting. Nurture – to nourish, to cultivate, to foster, to educate. Reclaim to make especially land usable for growing crops or living on. In exercise 4, page 114, you are to find in the text the following word combinations and explain them. Mother Earth Continuing gift of life Mother Earth gives food and shelter to all living things. She nurtures us, reclaims our bodies after death and continues the cycle of nature. Forces of nature – 
The next exercise suggests that you read the following statement and say whether you agree or disagree with it. In the battle for power over the earth, the forces of nature will almost certainly win. Explain what Mother Earth is and how it got its name. What, in your opinion, is the importance of waters on the Earth? In your own words, explain to an alien what flowers are. Make your explanation as clear and descriptive as possible. Make a list of adjectives you have used. Explain why it is easy to believe in nature spirits. For the next exercise, you will need to revise the usage of pronouns and quantifiers and pay attention to the difference between them. You have some valuable information in your school books, page 141. Be sure you consult it before trying your hand at choosing the correct defining pronoun or quantifier. All is a generalizing pronoun. It takes a group of things or persons as a whole. Both points out two persons, things or notions mentioned before. The verb is plural with both. When both refers to the subject of a clause, it can also be used before a main verb. Either has two meanings, each of the two or one or the other. We use any before nouns to refer to indefinite or unknown quantities or an unlimited entity. Neither allows us to make a negative statement about two people or things at the same time. None means not one or not any. Let's try to choose the correct defining pronoun together. There are two trees on the lawn. Gap. Of them are spruce trees. The correct pronoun here is both, because it points out that there are two trees. Read attentively the second sentence. I had three pencils. Have you seen any of them? Any is used in interrogative sentences. Either is excluded because it is only used with two options, but we have here three pencils. Now, I would recommend you pause the video and try to perform the exercise on your own. Hello again! I hope you've managed to choose the correct pronouns, which should be in the gap. Let's check the exercise together. The right pronoun is none, because it refers to not any of four trees, more than just two. Again, it is none. Here the pronoun neither is the correct one, because we have two options, two umbrellas. He owns 12 cows. All the 12 cows are jerseys. Any, because we use it for indefinite quantities in questions and negative sentences. Both Amy and Beth are twins. Either referring to two choices or possibilities. Here again we have two people and we use the pronoun both. I found all the questions difficult. Did you answer any of them correctly? Neither is used with just two options. Here we have six people, which suggests the usage of the pronoun noun. As a final activity, I would recommend you go outside to the nearest park or garden and embrace a tree. Close your eyes and listen to the sounds around you for five minutes without talking. Answer the questions.
What sounds did you hear? Which of the sounds you heard are artificial and which are natural? Which of the sounds are pleasant to listen to and which are not? Explain why. Describe the natural sounds. What do the wind, leaves, birds, stream, water, grass do? You can choose from the following verbs. Click, snort, shuffle, blow, whistle, chirp, rustle, splash. What is the effect of noise pollution on humans, animals and birds?